So today we'll be taking a close up look at how I built Rambo. If you got a cool custom Casey boat or something, comment down below or check the video description for my Twitter account. I'd love to see what you built. So I thought I'd do a tear down of Rambo so you guys can see what I got going on here. Start out with the power supply. Goes in last, so it has to come out first. This SFX power supply came with an adapter to put it in cases that are meant for standard ATX cases. So I just took that adapter, put it on here, traced it, jumbled it up. Nice and simple. Of course I did the same thing with the screw holes. Just traced the holes on the adapter and drilled them. Didn't do it quite perfectly. I had to uh, use a dremel to move them over a little bit to get everything to fit, but uh, it was relatively easy. Relatively easy. There's that model was this. There you go, model number. Hope you guys can see that. So let's see. SST-ST45SF. Just I found a 450 watt SFX power supply. I was like, okay, I'll get that. Way too goddamn expensive. I was expecting 50, 60 bucks. It cost me 80. Yeah. Next, I guess I'll just take out the uh, hard drive. It's three and a half inch right there with some standoffs, and just put screws on the outside. Just some random old Seagate. You can see the uh, motherboard tray standoffs I added on there to move to give enough clearance for the power connector. It's getting pushed on way too much. And I can use the power button in there. For some reason, that screw came loose when I was putting it together. Really necessary to have them that tight? No, it is not, but I get carried away sometimes. And it didn't hurt anything, so why not? And of course, it doesn't want to just come right out. Because that fan is so damn close that it hits that, and the motherboard has to be pulled away from the case this way, and the fan's in the way, so I have to take that out.
the ass. As you can imagine, it's a pain in the ass to get it all back in, too. To make this hole, I used a Dremel because I didn't have a hole saw. You can see the old trace from where I just took the back of an old 1U power supply that this fan came from, or the A40 millimeter fan came from, just put it on there and traced inside the grill of that uh, fan cover. And uh, yeah, just sat there forever with a Dremel. Going like this, it was a bitch, but it turned out alright. And the edges, these rough edges, are just perfectly covered by this 50 millimeter grill, which is crudely bent. The one that I bent nicer got lost. I'll rebend it and it'll look a little better. But whatever. Now I can take this out of the way. stereo cranked or if you're wearing headphones I suggest turning it down there's gonna be a really loud noise And now you can see the key to getting all that to work, the PCIe riser. Which has been working just fine. Except for when I first booted it up. At a 3x, at Gen 3 speeds, it crashes. Didn't even start a game or anything, just like 10, 15 minutes in, it just crashed. So I had to go into BIOS and drop it to Gen 1 speed. And no, I did not try Gen 2. Because the only difference between Gen 2 and Gen 3 is just the overhead. Basically there's the same amount of bits, the same same signal speed. It's just more of the signal is actual data that you're using and not just the signal that helps the GPU and motherboard talk to each other and know what's going on. So I just dropped it straight down to 1X. Or Gen 1 16X. Now Show. See, I cut it off because hinges here. So, yeah, left a little bit on the back here to make sure there's no gap, no seam. I put it in down here. The same adapter for the power supply that I used to uh, trace the trace the hole for the power supply. I cut a piece of that off, so I basically have a washer with a nut built in to uh, hold the bottom of the PCI bracket in place. And over here, oh crap, I Okay. Power switch has to come out of the way. Gotta get out of there. This is just a uh, five dollar part from Home Depot. Surprised that Home Depot even had a momentary switch of any kind, really. And there we go. See, I put Velcro on there too, mainly to. Uh, just help keep it from rattling around. Originally, I was going to just mount it in there with just the Velcro. Then I decided to put screws in there and whatnot. Oh. Mount a piece of angle. 
it's just a piece of sheet metal from the first ammo box that I screwed up. The uh, 480 has these threaded holes here, so I was able to just mount to that. Put one big hole here. Put this bolt through the side of the case. And I just dropped the screw. Oh well, we'll get to that later. And uh, here, I'll just take it out. Here's what holds the bottom of the graphics card in place. It's a piece of metal that's got a threaded hole in it. And that's all there is to it. The, uh, since the I.O. sticks slightly out the back, I slotted these holes so the motherboard can go in place and then slide over snug up against the I.O. shield. These four screw holes are for an SSD or a two and a half inch mechanical, whatever, it doesn't even matter. Which I don't have yet, so whatever, upgradeability I guess. And it, it's been working good, I've been happy with it. I just need to find a better heat sink because that's just a i3 stock cooler there that I stuck a blower fan from, uh, there's no pre-built power supply, one of them 1U looking power supplies, it's all funky and not standard in any way. I think that's what that came from. I threw it on top there. I want to get a solid copper heat sink. Or I'll probably just end up getting a uh, Silverstone AR06 and put it on there, and I should have enough room to replace its fan with this blower fan. And then I'll know how far out the fan will be this way, so I can figure out where the hole's going to go here. Although I'll probably just end up having to cut this whole spot out and make a shroud that bends it to where it needs to go get the air out or something, I don't know. But I'm not messing with that until I actually have the heat sink that I'm going to use. Need. Where's my lid? Shit. There it is. As I said in my first video, the lid had these rubber seals. Well, it was one rubber seal, but whatever. And then there's another piece of sheet metal holding it in place. I needed to get rid of that little bit of thickness so I could actually get the board straight up and down. So I drilled out the spot wells. And these are just kind of sitting there, but that's not a big deal. Then, obviously, cut this big ass hole here. And let me put. This in the place. Of it. This was just a some sort of grate that Firestone's headquarters here in Akron threw out. And I figured it'd be perfect for this. I'll probably just JB weld or epoxy that in place. Sand off all the paint and everything so it sticks real good. And then I'll either get some OD green paint and paint and everything, or I'll just go with a completely different color, black, or it might just go frickin' orange for all I care. I don't know, I haven't decided yet. And of course, where I mounted the motherboard with those big nuts, I didn't account for this hanging over it, so I just bent it up. Bend this one up a little bit too. I'm not too concerned about that. If I make another one, though, I'm going to be more careful about it and do it better. And that's about all there is to that. If you're wondering what the hardware specs are, this is a reference 480. And I have an i3-6300. It's enough. I've been happy with it. And I already said some random 500 gig Seagate drive. This is a 40 millimeter span that came out of... I don't know what kind of server it was. I don't even know if it was actually a server. But this was directing air from the side of the case for some reason. Even on a rack mount, so whatever. Through a little shroud that blew it straight into the power supply so it would get fresh air from outside. Got that from a salvage yard, they let me just take them, and this was the only one that worked. Blows a good bit of air for how small it is, and it's surprisingly quiet for how small it is and how much air it blows. It's pretty nice. Oh, 16 gigs of RAM, just crucial ballistics sport. Uh, ASRock H110M. ITX slash AC motherboard. And 
And since I don't have the uh, onboard USB ports, oh, look, I just happen to have this identical board uh, here, and then there's one over here, and then there's USB 3.0. Those just aren't even getting used. So that and the fact that the uh, two USB ports at the top are blocked by the hinge. So, yeah, I'm short a few ports. So, to plug in everything that I got, I have a hub. Whatever. It works. And yeah, I plan on using this similar to the way you would use a Razor Core. I use TeamViewer. I have to get a uh, monitor emulator, it's called which just plugs into HDMI or display port that makes the computer believe that uh, it makes Windows believe that you have a monitor plugged in that way uh, Steam and home streaming will run at whatever resolution you set it at Cause with no monitor plugged in Windows defaults to 800 by 600 resolution if you try doing Steam and home streaming you're getting an 800 by 600 stream no matter what you do because I want to fire this thing up and do some more gaming Oh. oh, wrong order. CPU first. I was putting a nut over the end of this bolt here, but it's so damn snug on that bolt. And then the Velcro, I, just, I don't, I don't need to at all. Still power button in. Not breaking it. Threads on this thing are pretty damn sketchy. Five bucks for this little freaking switch. Oh, you bastard. Get on it. Stay. Bastard. I can unplug and plug in these SATA cables with the board and GPU in there if I take the power supply out, but it's so much of a fucking pain in the ass. If you're wondering why that's ketchup and mustard, that switch and LEDs came from an HP Slim Run. And it just fits perfectly on this Azarok board so you don't have to mess with each individual fucking pin. Thanks Azrock for using what's apparently a standard. People bitch about standards for that non-existing. Yeah, I think they do, just nobody wants to use them. Oh, did I really? Yeah. The only drawback to this case. Gotta put the fan first. Gotta do everything in a specific order or it's just not gonna go well.
And now I can't tighten it all the way down because the edge of the IO shield has to go right under that fan. Yeah. Fucking snug. Could have made a little less snug if I didn't leave room for an SSD here, then I'd have about that much more room, but. Whatever. Figured screwing the SSD in right there was a little better than uh, taping it to the top of the power supply, so I want this route. This I don't have to plug in first because the uh, fan head is right on top of the board. screw in the bottom corner there to line up. As you can see it's right there. And there it is. Then it all and I forgot the air shield. Son of a bitch. And I should be able to squeeze it in there. push the board forward, that should push it in place. I'd probably save so much time if I just pulled the board back up. So just push the board forward. Tighten these screws down. And try not to scratch it like I did. should tighten this screw down, but whatever, I'll just snug this up by hand, I guess. That'll be, it's been fine like that for the last week, it'll be fine for, fuck, it'll be fine for years. And it's my own personal computer, not somebody else's, so I'll do whatever the fuck I want. Let's just cram that down in there. Wait another case fan hit it. 
And you notice the uh, CPU fan. Two pin. Yeah. Does it just run at 100%? Yes, but I can set it in the BIOS to actually PWM down to 50% if I want. Yeah. I don't know if that's just this board or if all PWM boards can do it, but this one does. Don't need a sense wire, don't need the fourth PWM wire, it just works. Because that's all you need to make a motor speed up or slow down. Just cut off the power to it, turn it back on rapidly. There you go. You don't need a special circuit in the fan. Don't need extra wires, none of that shit. It just works. have this little plug for when I take this thing with me, want to be steaming home streaming, there has to be an audio device connected. And when there's nothing plugged in, Windows doesn't even recognize it as there. So just plug whatever random thing in. Doesn't even have to be a speaker or anything connected to it. Just plug it in and there you go. Otherwise, if you try to do Steam at home streaming without that, then Windows just doesn't make the sound, so you can't stream the sound, so you're kind of sitting there like, well, this sucks. Alright, hard drive. Yes, I should have a fourth standoff, but I ran out of standoffs. It's a real pain in the ass, but whatever. I say it's worth it because it's awesome. left is a wire the rest of it up. Yeah, 
guess I should go to the right angle say to cable, but I don't have one that bends the way I need it, so I gotta do this for now. Don't really need those wires. Tempted to cut them off. But, you know, warranties. So, I didn't. And then, of course, these lights, I don't have anywhere to actually mount them because I'm not too worried about them, but it's kind of grim there. One way to get shot, these would be fine. They can tack down. Raise yourself. Loud noise again. And that's basically it. And, of course, there's a lid, too, which I guess I'll put it on. screwdriver that I knocked down. No biggie. Then of course at some point this will go here. And also, just to keep it from scratching tables, got these little stick on foam pads, put them on there. They used to have some cushion to them, but now they're just kind of solid. Just gotta keep from scratching tables. When I go over to a friend's or relatives. Okay, that's basically all there is to it. Enjoyed a close up of Rambo. Stay tuned for my custom uh, folding at home PC. It's basically going to be built like a folding or a Bitcoin mining rig, except it's going to be completely enclosed and double as a home theater PC. You just throw it on a TV to look nice. I'm thinking I'm going to go with a tempered glass front panel, maybe RGB or something, maybe. So yeah, that'll be coming up. Well, don't hold your breath for it, cause I have no idea. But you wish you had a handlebar mustache. Okay, that's better. Hope you have a very flexible mount for your flat screen at home. <laughs>